Thank you very much for um, this very, very exciting session. Um, and I would like to thank um, personally um, to all the speakers for sharing the perspective, like personal perspectives, uh, as well as like the, the national perspectives of how you equals you has been communicated um, through your lives. And then that's, that's very impressive. Um, I now would like to, um, dig a little bit deeper uh, into what you have already mentioned um, during your um, talk. Uh, so if possible, can I go uh, to um, Inet uh, for our first question? Um, you talk about your experience with your wonderful um, personal doctor, uh, Inet, uh, which I think is quite a privilege uh, for, for someone who is living with HIV to have a doctor who is, who is so understandable um, as well as like um, act as an advocate um, to, to uh, even push you to talk about your equals you in public. So uh, do you think that um, there could be any like practical tips that you can give to um, other peers living with HIV to start raising this issue? So to talk about this um, to their providers or even um, among their, their um, friends so that um, we can like all empower um, each other. Thank you, Dr. Nitya. Sawadi kab. And yeah. good afternoon, everyone from Asia. So, um, yes, I agree. I have the privilege of having a doctor um, who is very open and very, uh, very supportive towards people living with HIV. Um, to answer the question, I guess, first, um, based from the previous session, I think it is important for people living with HIV to learn what is U equals U because um, uh, the science the science behind U equals U because um, they cannot talk to their clinicians or doctors without really understanding U equals U. And I think simple messaging on what is undetectable uh, and why is undetectable is equivalent to un transmittable or you're having zero risk of transmitting the HIV virus um, will be very important for them to actually ask how, their doctors how are they going to reach an undetectable viral load. Um, and it is also very important for people living with HIV to, uh, to have their viral loads checked um, to make sure that uh, their viral loads are actually suppressed. And um, it's not just like one, uh, this, the solution is not just one, one sided, it is also uh, required or, you know, I, I think it's also necessary for the, for the clinicians or medical providers to actually learn about an un undetectable equals to untransmittable. Um, and there's a lot of scientific conferences and scientific reports that supports the, uh, the, this, this U equals U. And um, communicating undetectable is equal to untransmittable in a medical language may not be understandable to us who are ordinary people. Um, so that you know, it's, it's always good to have um, them, to have the doctors or medical practitioners um, explain in simple languages of what is undetectable and um, how, how is it, uh, how is undetectable, untransmittable. Um, in, in, in the case with me and my doctor, uh, I always ask her, what do you mean by this uh, when I have my test results? So what do you mean by this and what do you mean by this? Um, it, never, never afraid to ask questions. And I think asking questions means you are really wanting to learn and be aware of your status. Asking questions about your status and how to live healthy is really important for us people living with HIV and doctors should always be supporting uh, the goal of people living with HIV to be healthy and to be undetectable. That's, that's a very um, useful um, tips and I think that that will empower many other people out there who's living with HIV to, to um, there to ask questions <laughs> and um, thank you very much. And the next question will be to Dr. Wong. Um, 
you talk about yourself being a clinician advocate, and I think that's 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 a privilege. I I, I would say I um, although although some may feel that that it's um you you somehow um, be stigmatized as being a, an HIV clinician as well, but but um I think um in our field we we feel the privilege of of being able to be a, a HIV clinician. Um, my question to you is. Um, how you are going to, um, talk to the other healthcare providers, um, being in the same situation, having the same knowledge uh, that you have, um, having the chance to practice with the same experience that you have seen, um, your, um, PLHIV, uh, uh, clients, mm -hmm. um, to be able to speak up, um, about, um, you, you cost you, because I, I think that I have seen, um, so many, um, promotional, um, materials within our regions, um, having a doctor, um, wearing white gowns uh, with a stethoscope and you equals your um, um, a message uh, on the background. I would not uh, expect to see that happen in Thailand because I, I don't think there is any doctors in, in Thailand um, who is willing to uh, be like ambassador talking about you equals you. Uh, what is the situation in Singapore and, and what would be your um, suggestion? Uh, thanks so much for that question, Nitaya. I think... Um... In Singapore, I think fairly similarly to Thailand, the, the message of you equals to you is still fairly new. Uh, even amongst uh, ID physicians and HIV physicians, you know, uh, we, you know, for a long time, we've known the importance of getting uh, our patients uh, on treatment and making sure that they are virally suppressed. For a long time, you know, the thinking was just that this was because it would keep them healthy and, um, you know, prevent opportunistic infections, good, better quality of life and so on. But the whole idea of putting two and two together and really saying that, look, you know, we, we, with an undetectable viral load, we prevent people from transmitting the virus onto others. And then making that further link to saying that this is really a step forward and a, ch a game changer in terms of destigmatizing HIV, in terms of removing that fear of contagion or infecting others. So um, to be very, very honest, I think it has taken time and we are still really, you know, in the process of spreading the word about you equals to you. And, you know, it's not lost on me that last year for our Singapore HIV Congress, we invited you, Nitaya, to come to Singapore and talk to us about your experience with, with uh, you equals to you. And one of the messages uh, that you, you told us, and, you know, it's something that uh, I think really holds true and what we are trying to do as well is actually just to keep talking about it. Um, I think in any situation, perhaps in 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 uh in Singapore and Thailand maybe uh, I I really hear you when you say that it's difficult to imagine a doctor uh with a stethoscope and a white coat standing up there uh on 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 a, a poster or or on a, on a billboard somewhere saying look look this is you equals to you and I think that just speaks to a certain uh peculiar aspects about the societies and the communities that we live in that you equals to you might be seen as something that's a little bit uh, even controversial or or that it might sound like it's very um, uh, potentially risky to say such a thing but I think that's where as clinicians and as clinician advocates we come in because you know we might know that the, the evidence is very strong for that and that you know there is zero risk of transmission and so uh, it's really about keeping that conversation going and as clinicians as I said in my talk we have the privileged position of being having multiple roles and multiple hats right we speak to patients yes and they we, you know we are we are part of their lives in terms of providing care for them but we also speak to policy makers we also speak to uh, people who are involved in health promotion. We also speak to people who are involved in terms of making laws and regulations and that kind of technical expertise and talking and talking and talking and making sure that we never give up and making sure that, you know, people might get tired of listening to us, but having that same message and speaking the same language, everybody, uh, is, is something that we can do as, as, as clinician advocates. And I think it's similar to another question which I see uh, in the chat group, which is how do I talk about, you know, as a clinician, 
situation, how do I talk about this with dentists who might, uh, you know, refuse care to my patients? And this is something I spoke about in my talk as well. Thankfully, in Singapore, that experience is becoming less and less frequent, but I still do get patients who come in to say, doctor, I need you to refer me to another dentist. My previous dentist doesn't want to treat me anymore. So one of the strategies that we have used in terms of uh, communicating and uh, really trying to reach out and engage our professional colleagues is once again just going out there putting ourselves up there uh, giving talks uh, explaining the science and really relating it to them and I think one of the the tricks that has worked with with uh, speaking to people who are in uh, exposure prone practices is to tell them that actually if you know that the patient or the client that you're treating has HIV and you have that prior knowledge you are already uh, in a better position right most of the time you have to take for granted that the person who is uh, who we are providing care for may have any one of a number of different uh, bloodborne infections or other uh, diseases that they might spread to, and that's why universal precautions. You know, you assume that by uh, that everyone could potentially infect you with something, and therefore you take the, the the universal precautions that are required. So even beyond that, then you know what we do is to say that you know even if you take this into account with people who are on HIV treatment, they have zero detectable virus in their blood. The risk of them transmitting to you is really, really uh, negligible. I'm not saying that the change will occur straight away. And in fact, we have to still continue engaging people. Uh, but that's one of the roles that the clinicians uh, uh, have to do and have to take on as well. And, uh, you know, I think it, to summarize what I've just said, it's just speaking the same language, being very sure of what we are saying and keep talking about it and never stopping until uh, we manage to get to where, where we need to be. Yes, we will never stop talking. <laughs> Even <laughs> if people don't want to listen to us, we will keep yes. um, talking, uh, telling the truth. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wong. And then um, maybe um, to Dr. Tui, uh, we have um, seen um, great examples uh, when, when people talk about you equals you campaign in Asia, uh, they will always mention the K equals K uh, campaign uh, in Vietnam. Um, so I assume um, that um, this is something that is this being seen, being recognized at the national level, like truly at the national level. Um, so could you please tell us a little bit more on how um, um, you have come to uh, this stage of having you, because you recognize uh, at the policy level, um, what, what has been like, lessons learned um, so that we can, like all of us in other countries, can learn the shortcut uh, into getting you, because you uh, to the policy level, um, as well as how you see uh, these being scaled up or replicated in other settings. Dr. Tui, could you please um, unmute yourself? Dr. Tui, could you please unmute yourself first? Uh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, okay, please go okay. ahead. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, when we talk about um, you, you put you as a policy maker perspective, I think in Vietnam we... Uh, Actually, we, 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 we carry out some uh, EU, 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 we call EU, uh, EU, It's similar to, uh, the, the meaning is, uh, is similar to EU, EU, EU. And actually, we carry out some activity, uh, the first activity, activity in uh, uh, 2017, uh, before the international conference in uh, Amsterdam. Actually, we also have support from uh, uh, US CDC, uh, but for policy maker perspective, I think we 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 should have uh, uh, policy uh, or guideline, national guideline for this. Uh, in Vietnam, we also issue the Ministry of Health also issues the national guideline on uh, HIV care and treatment. In that uh, guideline, national guideline, we also mentioned about KU or K or U with you. On that, we also mentioned uh, and the meaning of this message. 
So I think it's very important for healthcare worker because uh, <coughs> you know all healthcare workers have to follow the national guideline. I think it's very important policy for healthcare workers because uh, many many people uh, talk about the uh, uh, healthcare worker in the grassroots level and as a, and uh, many many uh, as a level maybe they do do not believe and they do cannot uh, uh, um, reach this with this message when we have a national guideline we have an uh, official um, policy issues by ministry of health we mentioned about that message we explain about this message so maybe all healthcare worker can uh, believe and follow that guideline. And uh, for uh, for other people, uh, even for um, policy maker, we also have um, we also have to uh, organize um, the workshop uh, for policy maker. Uh, in this uh, um, workshop, we have to present about the uh, um, evidence uh, scientific. As within uh, this message, because of for policy makers, they need to have, they need to know the evidence. Uh, they uh, should be, uh, know about the evidence uh, of this message. And uh, for patient uh, or client, actually, we have to conduct a lot of uh, workshop or a forum. Uh, and we also conduct a lot of uh, communication campaign. Uh, even for last year, on the one day, on the occasion of one day, we also choose. Uh, we also integrate many many uh, messages uh, to to mention about the KU or KI or you So uh, I and. Uh, of course, the healthcare worker also have to consult and have to provide us messages uh, for patients when they uh, uh, come to the clinic uh, for check up, for, for check up, or for um, uh, uh, doing viral load tests. Uh, even we also have to conduct training code for journalists because journalism is very important because they uh, also understand, if they understand about that, they can, they can uh, communicate this and explain this message for, for us. Actually, this is KU Kukai in Vietnam uh, from beginning is not easy. To understand, I mean, that message is not easy to understand for journalists. So even after uh, doing the uh, conducting the training course, many many journalists uh, cannot write uh, exactly what we want. We expected they want to, as uh, they have to write, uh, and uh, so even we have to do the re. Uh, training, uh, the training, training again for them. And now you even you can uh, search uh, in Google. Uh, you just find Kai you will Kai in Vietnam. So it's where there are about uh, million, million um, 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 messages. Uh, on Kai Yuba Kai or Yuba Yu in Vietnam, in Vietnam. So I think for policy maker perspective, if we want to 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 um, um, communicate for every people can understand this, we have to uh, come by many many methods uh, from policy to national guideline to conducting uh, and conducting. Uh, activity and yeah that's that's a great um point yeah. and and i i think that it um um echoed uh what um dr wong also suggests don't stop talking and it this is this is again um oh, yeah. don't stop 
training people don't just assume yeah. that people understand this clearly yeah. because yeah. because i i mean and, and it's not even um depends on on your professions right even doctors they they, they don't always understand you equals you so how can we assume that policy makers yeah. or journalists yeah. will understand this um very easily um yeah. that's that's a very important point and i also think that the guidelines thing is is something that um we may need um um, for uh, to 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 address um, the implementation uh, part of you equals you. I mean, training, education, talking may address the stigma part, uh, but the implementation part. Um, instead of um, having this like discretionary um, fashion of practice, you meet with this doctor. Uh, you um, uh, are lucky, <laughs> uh, but if you meet with other doctors, you may not be able to communicate. And you equals you. So I I, I think that's that's a very important point as well um now in that um there's one question from mark nelson who unfortunately uh um, faced the uh, technical difficulties and could not um, come back to join us. Um, Mark asked um, that there seems to be a problem with openness driving stigma. How do we prevent this? Oh, um, hello. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Dr. Mark. So, um, the, I think there's a follow-up question uh, on the second paragraph about uh, whether the uh, people undetectable will be stigmatized. I think on a health perspective and a medical perspective, the goal is to put people living with HIV into ART um, immediately, as soon as possible, regardless of CD4. Um, and a program perspective, that is very important to prevent uh, the transmission of HIV. Um, the the I think the, the perspective there um, should be uh, HIV should not be, should, people living with HIV should not be stigmatized and um, people living uh, with HIV should be put into ART as soon as possible. On a social perspective, I think that um, this is just my observation based on my experience. HIV is not only a health issue, it is also a social issue because from my experience, HIV and from the stigma and discrimination that I receive, HIV strikes at the very core of humans' limited scope about my dignity and morality. So it does, it, this goes beyond medical or health status. HIV brands a person of someone who is not. And I think if people um, are not educated or not aware about HIV and the behaviors, um, then stigma will be there. Stigma is in the mind, discrimination is in the action. I go uh, and I support the, the, the point of um, Dr. Tui that um, yes, uh, U equals U can reduce the stigma in terms of the policy perspective. Um, if we are going to prove that undetectable is equal to untransmittable, um, it can have an effect to the programs and policies and implementations so that services, more services will be available to people living with HIV who, are, who has undetectable viral load. Yeah, that's that's um, very very important um, aspects of how we communicate. Um, you equals you. Um, there is one question which um, was directed to all three of you, um, asking um, your opinion um, about what you think if we reposition HIV AIDS um, as if properly treated. Um, HIV is a chronic non-infectious disease. Um, do you think this will uh, somehow um, reduce stigma discrimination um, in a tangible way? Um, any of you, please feel free to go first. Maybe I'll just uh, jump in first. Uh, and this is something that I've been telling uh, my patients first and foremost. You know, I tell them in clinic that actually uh, with HIV, you know, you take medications. And oftentimes nowadays, the medications, as Annette may be able to, uh, to know, it's very much more convenient to take. It's one tablet sometimes with all the, the, the active ingredients in one single tablet. You take it once a day, very few side effects. And it essentially makes you, uh, your immune system come back to normal and you're really, really healthy. Uh, it's, it, 
you know, it's no different, especially for my older patients who might also have been living with, let's say, diabetes or high blood pressure, or high cholesterol for some time. I tell them it's really not that different, right? You you take this medication to control uh, the, the, the condition, to keep it you know, well controlled so that you don't have any sort of uh, complications from, from, from this disease. And, and then it's, it, I can see that for, for many of my patients, it, 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 it's a frame shift. It's, it's a mindset shift, right? Because suddenly they are seeing their HIV in the same way that they saw these other chronic diseases that they may never have thought about as being uh, particularly uh, uh, stigmatizing or, or, or challenging in, in that way. And then the next step would be to then educate uh, and I think this is sort of a question that Mark asked as well. How do we educate other healthcare workers, uh, non-HIV healthcare workers to reduce stigma? And I think part of that is involving uh, people living with HIV in our education efforts. So, and the, the, the outreach that I conduct with my program really puts people living with HIV front and center of these outreach events where, you know, we say, you know, we are only the doctors. We are not the ones uh, uh, who, who can give you that first uh, hand experience, but we have one of our patients uh, who's happy to talk about their experience, you know, to, to other clinicians, to other physicians who might not be mm. HIV uh, uh, practitioners and let them know about uh, what it's like living as a patient. And I think that really helps to lower barriers to, to, to starting to realize that, um, you know, these are patients just like any other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you. thank you very much. Imad, would you like to um, join uh, this discussion as um, the representative from uh, people living with HIV? Thank you, Ka. Um, uh, I think I, I will just re echo what I have said earlier that um, uh, HIV, when talking about HIV and reducing stigma and discrimination, like people in, in the community or advocates of HIV, including community clinicians and um, scientists or ac academics, um, we should not only look at the, the medical or the health perspective, but also on the bigger perspective in the society. Um, so there is uh, there's a social perspective about HIV. There is this um, religious perspective about HIV because HIV has been branded uh, or a person is H with HIV has been is being branded as someone who is immoral, um, promiscuous, or you know, having this uh, unsafe sex practices. Um, unless we address that in a bigger society or in a, uh, in a bigger population about um, ab about uh, the behaviors or about how HIV is being transmitted, and making people understand that. Um, it is not about the religion, it's not about the morality, but it is about yeah. how one person can actually keep himself or herself safe and her sexual partner safe. Um, I think we can uh, reduce stigma, but I think that will go on for a long, long, long mm -hmm. time. <laughs> um, but in terms of um, uh, stigma and discrimination on uh, like uh, branding it as a non-infectious disease, mm -hmm. um, I agree with them. Um, uh, that um, it's 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 manageable. It's it's the same as um, hepatitis or or diabetes. Um, and putting that on paper, black and white, undetectable, sequels, so untransmittable, um, and uh, spreading that widely to clinicians and um, mm -hmm. including that in their curriculum or whatsoever, um, making mm -hmm. them understand on a, a scientific perspective. I can I guess that will be beneficial for mm -hmm. us um, people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, great. Um, so, Dr. Tui, um, you may already have thought um, through this at the, at the national level. Um, yeah. So, what's your perspective here? Um, I think uh, you with you message is very important. Every, every owner, uh, owner but no, that's us. Because I think it can uh, reduce stigma for people living with HIV and uh, many men has an uh, important meaning for or if we know about you with you message. But from my experience, we should be careful because if, from if, uh, my experience in Vietnam, because when we talk about you with you, uh, some people think that, some people think that, uh, now I got, I got, uh, I, 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 I have an ARV, Achievement. So maybe I cannot uh, transmit HIV for other people. It's true, but not uh, it's not enough because uh, if uh, they just uh, they cannot transmit HIV for other people, if if they 
ใช่ว่าอาจารย์อันดีทั้งใจบอกเย Uh, so people, even people have a i v but less than uh, they just uh, get a i v less than six months. Uh, first of all, maybe uh, their viral load is not suppressed <coughs> or not un uh, uh, not uh, undetectable. So uh, we should. Uh, when we uh, consult for patient, when we, uh, we 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 communicate for patient, we always uh, explain about that, and uh, we also <coughs> we also always have to explain about the e w with you message just for people living with HIV for stopping uh, uh, transmitting uh, about HIV, not for us as a sexual transmit disease. So. Uh, We, when we talk about that, we should remember to 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 explain more information about uh, sexual transmitted disease and something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I I I agree that um, it seems to be an easy message to to uh, convey, but it also um, has like many layers of um 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 social um sexual. Uh, behavioral aspects that we will need to take into consideration, um, and then related to to um, the policy things, uh, Dr. Chui, uh, could you please also let us um, know how you balance the use of um, um, the budget? Uh, health budgets in the country to both address um, stigma discrimination and also to continue treatment and prevention because I think that uh, many countries are struggling uh, on how to address um, S and D and 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 without any budget. Sure, budget, budget is. Uh, I think budget is a problem for many many countries, not only in Vietnam, uh, but we. Uh, Have to 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 uh, 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 do this uh, campaign flexible. For uh, province, we have we have uh, support from uh, uh, CDC or from PEPFA or CDC uh, or uh, Global Fund um, project. Maybe we can use that a bit from that pro uh, project. To, to, to support for a new, new campaign and stigma and discrimination reduction campaign. And for us, for us, uh, province, we have to integrate this message in uh, a uh, program. So uh, for province, with support from donor, maybe we can organize a, a separate campaign. But for, As a province, maybe we have to integrate the campaign. Uh, first of all, yeah. we use a uh, one uh, day campaign and we uh, integrate this message in this campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. I think um, this is something that we will need to um, continue to to have this mutual effort to try to make sure that we have enough budget to address stigma discrimination, yeah. and otherwise we will go nowhere from from um, just like trying to expand HIV testing and prep and um, HIV treatment. So uh, it comes to the end of the, uh, the the session, and thank you very much, um, all three speakers, for your wonderful talk um, and wonderful discussion. Um, and I hope that uh, we will uh, be able to discuss more again in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you. So now um, it's coming to the uh, closing session of this um, forum. Can I go to the next um, slide, please? I would like to thank all the speakers uh, for the wonderful um, sessions today. We have learned a lot uh, from um, the science to the uh, implementation to the policy level, and, and then from the individual perspectives uh, from all of the speakers um, here. Also, thank you um, to our wonderful moderator as well. Next slide, please. And also, um, I also would like to again um, thank you for our endorsers uh, for this um, forum, and we hope to get more and more endorsers uh, for next year's um, stigma and discrimination forum. 
Next, please. And um, I also have to um, say that I'm very impressed uh, with uh, how WIF Healthcare has been supporting um, the educational um, sessions um, in um, our region. And um, it is um, the main supporter of the Asian Stigma and Discrimination Forum uh, 2020. Next, please. So re please remember that we really value your feedback. We uh, really want this session to be um, truly useful for everyone. So uh, please don't forget to uh, fill in the survey, which will be sent to you um, via email after uh, this session. Next, please. And um, before I end, um, I also would like to um, let all of you know that there will be um, this stigma discrimination forum in other regions. The Latin American one will be uh, on the 28th of October, and then the African one will be on the 11th of November. And uh, both of these fora will be um, in virtual um, uh, format opening session of the APAC 2020. Thank you very much.